Welcome everyone to build 41. This is a Case Labs SMA8 build. And sadly, this was the last SMA8 that we could get our hands on, at least in Australia. And we only have one more SMA8 build that I know of coming up after this one. So this is the second to last SMA8 build probably that we will ever do. But you can see it's quite a high-end build. We have a couple of special edition Titan XPs, the Asus Maximus 10 Formula, an Intel Core i7-8700K, 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws Z, two one terabyte 850 Evos, and a one terabyte 970 Evo M.2. We're going to be doing through panel mods, which I often do in K-Sub's cases, particularly the SMA8, just due to all of the compartments that the loops run through. Without the through panel mods, the loops become so long, messy, and weak, so through panel mods are the only way to go. But I'm going to do things a bit differently. This is going to be quite a unique layout that we've never done before, mostly due to the cross-flow radiator that I'm installing at the top. By the way, if you're wondering where build 40 is, it's been reserved for the Inwin Tau 2.0 build, which we've been working on already for quite a while now. It is a very involved build. It's going to be a massive multi-part build log, so I'm really looking forward to that one. We decided to go for something a little bit more minimalistic with this build. So instead of going for the extended top, which we always have in the past, we've just gone for the standard top, which means that the fans need to be installed on the inside. This is not even much of a restriction, it just means that you can't install as thick radiators, but you can still install 60 millimeter thick radiators. But I wanted to follow through with this minimalistic idea. I wanted this build to be very practical clean and understated and so I didn't go for a 60 millimeter thick radiator at the top I've gone for something thinner and this is also a black ice cross flow radiator so I didn't want it coming all the way down to the motherboard and making things cramped I wanted everything to be nicely spaced out for example the pump and reservoir configurations everything to look clean and balanced so that's the reason for the radiator selection in this build and also for the cross flow, which is something that I hardly ever do. But this is a cross flow radiator. So you can see that the coolant goes in here and then it comes out in this corner. A great way to really clean up your loop. So these are Hardware Labs black ice radiators, very high end, extremely high performance, still absolute overkill radiator capacity for this system, despite how thin they are. They outperform a lot of other brands being all copper and brass and also having a larger surface area fin array, many other things about these radiators that just make them incredible. 
and then we have the 560 millimeter radiator in the bottom, also absolute overkill. So the fans can be run very slow. I'm running them at 30% of their RPM until the system hits, well, until the CPU hits or the GPUs hit about 50 degrees Celsius and then the fans start to ramp up. Now this 560 millimeter radiator mount is not the case labs one because as far as I know there's none of them left we couldn't get our hands on any so we decided to see and see some of our own and we made a lot extra because we knew that a lot of people would want these so this is built from three millimeter aluminium and it's painted in DNA 2k matte black paint and yeah it works great it's a little bit different in its design to the case labs one but it does exactly the same thing the color scheme for this build, the customer knew that he wanted white for one of the loops, but he was unsure for the other loop. So originally we were going to go with Mayhem's Aurora Silver Booster in Mayhem's X1 Clear with clear ice UV blue dye and do a UV loop. But then it just wasn't enough color in the build, so we decided to add blue. So you can see the Silver Aurora Booster in there, although the pump is only running at 30% of its RPM. So it's not really giving much of an effect until the pump starts to ramp up but yeah that's what we ended up with and in the other loop is mayhem's pastel white with clear ice uv blue so this loop would actually give a really nice uv effect both of the loops with uv lighting but i've actually installed rgb lighting one aqua computer led strip at the top and one at the bottom here and I've set these to white, but they're running off the fab work, so they can be set to anything. And then the cable colors, because we were unsure about the color scheme, we decided to go for something a bit neutral. So we have white, white carbon, and carbon BTI, all from MDPCX, of course. So let's take a look at these loops. Now, first of all, the mods, you can see how they worked out. We have a custom mid plate. And a lot of people ask me how I do the three panel mods. Well, there's really only one way to do them and that is the hard way. You have to test fit everything and you have to actually run the tubes, which I generally do with fittings and mark the holes. So I had this mid plate in here when it was just bare aluminum. I marked everything out and then I took it out and drilled the holes and painted it. But you have to be extremely accurate because if any of these uh, slightly off these lines you're easily going to be able to see it so yeah you have to be very careful and I suggest well for me once I get a good template it's something that I keep because it's very hard to get a good template in the first place and also these ports up here and then there's the ports for the pumperous combos so I've spun the pumperous combos around the other way and that's something you can do with proteum reservoirs because of the aluminium retention ring. You can rotate the caps and the pump top, the base, to face any direction. So the inlet and outlet are facing out the back. And then we just have the other inlet on this side. And there's also a side inlet as well, which we're not using. And for the GPU loop, the white loop, that's actually the flow coming back into the reservoir. But for this loop, it's not. I'm just using that as the drain port, which worked out well also to achieve the symmetry. So the tube is Singularity Computer's 16 millimeter acrylic. The fittings are Bits Power Black Sparkle, 16 millimeter hardline compression fittings. Let's start with the GPU loop. So first we go out the back. We have a 90 degree single out the back and then we come up to here with another 90 degree single into the GPUs, 90 degree single, 90 degree dual. I just wanted to have some symmetry through the middle there, hence the extra fittings. And then we have a parallel configuration between the GPUs, 90 degree single, 90 degree dual and down underneath through panel fitting there. Now underneath, I have all the fittings going into the 560 millimeter radiator. It's a series of, well, it's two 90 degree singles and some extension fittings. Coming out a 90 degree single, and then we go across back to the mid plate. 
a through panel fitting and then a 90 degree single back into the pump and reservoir configuration. For the CPU loop, exactly the same configuration out the back up to here. Then we have two 90 degree singles, a 20 millimeter extension into the CPU water block. We have a male to male fitting and a female to female fitting. Now the reason I've done that is because the steps between the different extension fittings for bits power is five millimeters. But if you want to achieve half of that 2.5 millimeters because the heights don't match up. So the height between this CPU water block and the motherboard water block, the difference between them is 2.5 millimeters, not five millimeters. So this is where you use a little trick. You can use a male to male, a female to female. So then we have a 90 degree single. We have a medium telescopic fitting and a 15 millimeter extension fitting. The large telescopic fitting wouldn't fit there. Then we have a 90 degree single, 20 millimeter extension. The system just went to sleep. And then we go up and into the top radiator. And coming out on the other side, we have a 90 degree joule to gain an offset, a large telescopic fitting, a 90 degree single, and another 90 degree single. Now you've probably noticed that I've actually swapped out the motherboard. So originally we had the previous Maximus, the Maximus 10 formula. Now we have the Maximus 11 formula. And that's because this is a rebuild and upgrade. These components were second hand. And it turns out that the motherboard was faulty. So we had to replace it. And when I replaced it, I actually had to change around some of the fittings and the tube because the layout of this motherboard is a little bit different. Looking around the back, you can see how the mods worked out. So there's two SSDs, but I allowed space for a third. You can see there is a lot more space on the motherboard tray for installing SSDs, hard drives, and other devices, such as the fab work, usually mods that I do on Case Labs cases because I tend to take up all this space over here with the fill and drain ports. But I only drilled the fill and drain ports that I actually needed for this build. Sometimes I just drill all four ports across the top and all four across the bottom. And that way you can use them as fill, drain, inlet, outlet, or for temp sensors. But I actually have the temp sensors down here on T fittings. And the reason I did that is just so that they're symmetrical because if I installed them into the pump tops, they'd be one in one position, one in another, and you'd be able to see them around the front. So this way they're nice and clean around the back. For all of the peripheral cables, we decided to use carbon BTI from MDPCX. Normally for peripheral cables, we just use black so that they blend into the background. And you can see the drain ports underneath down there. So, the one for the CPU loop is at literally the lowest point, but the one for the GPU loop is not quite, but it does drain fairly effectively. It at least drains the part of the loop that you kind of need to dismantle. So if you need to upgrade, remove the GPUs, it drains that part. It's only the radiator that stays full down in the bottom. So you might be thinking, why didn't we install another radiator on this side, a 280 millimeter radiator in front of the power supply? Because there is room for that on this case. Well, some people don't just fill every space because it's there. I'm a fan of kind of using the space to make things look balanced, but some customers don't do that. This is just a very minimalistic and practical build, you know, kind of the funds have been put more into the performance of the components. And then we haven't gone too far with overkill radiator capacity and going extremely over the top with mods or anything else like that. Probably this space down here, if I were not to install the radiator, what I would do is, I don't know, install a hard drive bay or a couple of hard drive bays or something like that. And you could fill this section up with hard drives because it's really easy to get that bottom panel off and drill some holes in it to install some hard drive bays. 